Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. The times were terrible. John was on fire with his relationship with God and declaring, quit the lying, the corruption, the greed. Quit the deceit and return to God. He was offering the ritual cleansing of immersion in the waters of the River Jordan. Throngs of people, Mark writes, people from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem were coming to that river. The times were terrible. It felt chaotic with their despot of a king who was simply a puppet of the Roman occupiers. People were seeking and yearning for a way, a way out of the chaos and these terrible times. They were yearning for some reassurance, looking for some direction, needing some hope. They came to the river, knowing something needed to change for themselves, for their country. John's message, tell the truth, confess, repent, return to God, was compelling. It spoke to something deep within them because the times were terrible. They were drawn to seek God. Maybe they just needed to know God was with them. They needed to feel some affirmation. Or maybe they had had an awakening, had a spiritual experience that compelled them to go to John and the river. They were finding like-minded others with similar experiences so they didn't feel so alone in the, these terrible times. In times like these, we need a spiritual experience to lift us. John said to all gathered that this river baptism of repentance was just the beginning. He says, according to Mark, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I have immersed you with water, but he will immerse you with the Holy Spirit. And he came. Jesus came down to the river, compelled by something that had been growing inside of him he wanted to get it out in the open now. It was time to go out to his community. And just as he was coming up out of the water, says Mark, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came down from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And so Jesus' ministry began with baptism in the river and then infused with the Holy Spirit. He was God's beloved child and confirmed in this, he could go out into the unknown of the wilderness and learn more. On Wednesday of this past week, we went deeper into the chaotic wilderness of these awful times. Ironically, that Wednesday was the Feast of the Epiphany, a season of new light. The days are slowly going 
brighter, staying longer. And it's a new calendar year. And so surely this is all a chance for a new beginning, a new start. Yet, as the Electoral College began to count the votes, the day grew darker. The terrible was added to by the awful. Probably the isolation of being sheltered in place makes absorbing the news more intense, more powerful, harder to bear. How not to be lost in the chaos and uncertainty of these terrible times? It's so easy to lose sight of meaning, to lose that connection with God, to become deaf to the Holy Spirit that's telling you and me that we're God's beloved children. For me, I think some of that epiphany light did indeed tear through the day of that news. And it happened with the light of faces gathered at a Zoom prayer meeting. It was our usual Wednesday weekly gathering at 4.30 of a healing prayer vigil that many people uh, from the healing ministry has sponsored and committed to since the beginning of all this, basically in April. And all those faces gathered on a screen together to pray as we have committed to do each and every week for the healing from the pandemic of COVID, the pandemic of systemic racism, to remember all our black brothers and sisters who have been killed by the police, to pray for the natural disasters from climate change, and now, now we add to pray for our divided nation. And instead of being overwhelmed in the praying of all this and lost in the despair, in gathering to pray for this, to the same God, seeking the same Christ to lead us, we received the Holy Spirit and were reminded that God loves us. We were reassured of our identity as children of God who is love. What we always say as we finish praying together is that we feel better. And there's smiles on that screen and we give each other the peace. The act of naming out loud the terrible events of the day with others of the same intention in prayer, laying it out before God this God of love transforms us. We always feel a relief, a renewal. The heaviness of the day is lightened. One person said, I feel more refreshed from that 20 minutes of praying than if I had taken a two hour nap. From that simple weekly minutes of naming out loud to God with others, the terrible and the tragic, the frightening and the failures, the Holy Spirit comes to us and we are renewed, reborn. We leave in the kind of peace in which we're able to bring peace out to others. This, what I'm describing, is the baptism of the Spirit that Jesus gave us. All we have to do is return to it. In this case, stopping and showing up on Zoom. That's what John's baptism was about. He was making ready his community to receive the Holy Spirit. I think in Dante's Divine Comedy, I have to shout out to Bev Hawk who loves this. Um, this portion of his poem describes this so perfectly. 
He writes, The love of God, unutterable and perfect, flows into a pure soul the way that light rushes into a transparent object. The more love it finds, the more it gives itself, so that as we grow clear and open, the more complete the joy of heaven is. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater their intensity of their love. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. And mirror-like, each soul reflects the other. Jesus has given us the way to endure, the way out. The way to the river is the way of love shared. Each time we gather to share with each other our prayer, to our seeking, our confession, to share our hope and our despair and our mistakes. Each time we gather drawn by something that's gnawing inside of us, gathering however we can, we are at that river and we can come out of the waters of this chaos and see that the way out is the way of love. On Sunday, we are gathering in the way we can, at the river with our brother, Bob Gura, who has been called by something deep within him to claim and strengthen a life of listening and receiving the power of the Spirit. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. And the more souls who resonate together, the greater the intensity of their love. We souls who gather with him on Zoom will receive that same spirit in our witness to his baptism. That's the power of the Spirit. That's how the way of love is revealed. That's how we receive the grace and the strength we need. Because the times are terrible. And the only way out is the way of love.